Hello, Reformers, and welcome to a special feature of Bastard Bonds. Now, this is a game that I have been meaning to play for some time now. Yes, it's taken me a long time to get to this, unfortunately, as real life tends to interfere with quite a few of these special features that I've intended to do over the past months, weeks? Ah, oh, well, whatever the case. We are a prisoner, and we have to try and escape. Now, that sounds like a very very simple premise but it gets it gets a, a lot more in depth and a lot better as we start a new character you will see why i say that the door creaks open and a guard takes you by the arm expressionless he takes you into a dim courtroom and leads you up to a podium where you stand alone before a row of white wigs and black robes a hush falls over the assembly and the judge speaks take record of the defendant's likeness for the court archives this is where we get to make our character. So as you can see, there are a huge amount of different body types here. You can create any one you so desire. You can be an orc, you can be a woman, and you can be a man, because, yeah, that's that's all we have. So we're going to be a big guy. Yes, we're going to be a big guy, and we're going to have a beard. And, oh, uh, yes, uh, mm, yes, let's, let's go for... Blue? No. Let's go for... Oh, wow. Okay, so he can be very, very... Okay, let's let's give him some robes here. And... Okay, I don't even know. I'm just adding random things. Let's, let's give him one sleeve, because having two is just not fashionable. So, yes, let's do that, and let's give him some of those. That sounds good to me. And let's give him a different color, shall we? Let's, let's, let's have... Hmm... Well, ooh, purple actually looks pretty good. Okay, wait. Let's remove some of this. There we go. Okay, so I would like that and this. Oh, that's looking pretty cool. Yeah, so as you can tell, you can actually get layering. So your outfit can have layers, which of course is, is always a good idea. And we're going to be... Hmm, let's see. Let's give him a purple beard as well because we have to accessorize. So let's go for that. That looks pretty good to me. Yes. There we are. And maybe a hood. Yes. There we go. Okay, so that that is what we will do. And then we can proceed with the trial. State your name for the court. And now we can decide a name. So I can apparently oh, I can delete that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call myself Reformist because well that, that seems to be kind of fitting for this kind of game. So we're gonna we're gonna go with that, yes. Reformers, you stand accused before the court. No, know you the charges brought against you? And this is exactly why I really like this game, because this choice influences the availability of party members and personal traits. So you have heresy, you have arson, you have quackery. Oh, we might have to go for quackery, even though I have no idea what that is. Or necromancy, for example. So, yeah, there's actually a bunch here that could be really cool. Let's go for necromancy. We look like a necromancer, don't we? You've been accused of magicking the restful dead to your will. What say you to these charges? Now, what you decide to plea influences the availability of party members and personal traits, as well as the player's alignment. Your plea is not necessarily truthful. I am actually going to say that I have committed necromancy, because... Who in their right mind would not think that the guy in the purple robes is a necromancer? I don't know. Tell the court I have committed necromancy. Your admission of guilt is commendable, and the court will consider this in your judgment. Oh, well, that's good. Reformist, the court has deliberated upon your fate. There is no salvation for you in this world. You shall be blinded, your tongue cut, and your sin purged in holy flame. You are hereby stripped of your citizenship and judged guilty. You shall be branded with your crime and interned at the stocks of Lucat to await the execution of your sentence. May God have mercy upon your soul. So we are, we are apparently not having those things done to us just yet. Thank goodness. You are taken back to your cell where you are held down by several guards as your neck is burned with hot iron. You are forever branded a necromancer. I don't really mind that. We're wearing a hood. Yes. Over the next few days, you are taken by boat to the island of Lucat. An angry wind whips heavy rain as you are put on a lifeboat with another man in chains and jettisoned some distance from the shore. The current carries you rapidly toward a short cove where men in guards' uniforms wait to receive you. 
Without a word, you are dragged from the boat and up the path to the old fortress that houses the stocks, and thrown, soaked and shivering, into your cell where you await for the execution of your sentence. Something, however, seems strange. Nobody comes to check on you. Nobody comes to feed you. Time passes at an agonizing crawl, and it seems you are being left to die here, despite your sentence. Then, after who knows how long, there is a voice at your cell door that snaps you back to attention. Hey you, bone mage, eat this. You don't look so good. A roll of bread drops in through the bars and tumbles toward you. As you tear into it, the voice continues. I have a proposition for you, but first I need to know if you really are what they say you are. Tell me, are you really an necromancer? Uh, are we? Whether you stick to your story influences the availability of party members and personal traits. Yes, it is true. I am a necromancer. Ah. Wait, an actual necromancer? I didn't think. The man's voice is cut off in a strangled cry as he is slammed against the bars by a gigantic, nearly naked man the size of an ox. Hmm, okay. In the space of just a few moments, the large man breaks the smaller one's neck, and then searches his body. Finding nothing to his liking, he takes the dead man's boots and leaves. You stand and peer through the bars and see the key, presumably to your cell, on the floor just a few feet away. The opportunity could not be better. With a simple incantation, you seize on the moment of the guard's death to push his corpse into unlife and bind it to your will, unlocking the door and releasing you. You gather yourself and set forth, so now we have a reanimated guard as a companion. Oh yes we do. Yes, because I actually played this a little bit of time ago when I was first trying it out and I was actually planning on recording it, but then obviously things got in the way. But anyway, I had a different companion then. I chose to be a cannibal before, and I gained a fellow that was also similarly, sh shall we say, he was kind of sympathetic to that, so, <laughs> yes. So now, let's see, what are we going to do here? We have 10 points, so we can spend them on anything we desire. So this is the attack tree, this is the defense tree, and this is the utility tree, so as you can see here... Weave, in the utility tree, is used to perform magical or ap academic tasks. Requires the skill of ritualist to attempt. Improving Weave grants 2 HP. Now, Blast. Blast spells attack from range and apply status effects to both enemies and allies. Improving Blast grants 2 HP. So we're going to be improving this somewhat. Let's get that a little bit, and we're going to get some of this too. And I think we're going to get this as well, because ward spells heal and invigorate allies, and we have a reanimated guard, so I think it would be a good idea to get one of those, wouldn't it? So let's just improve our blast a little bit more, and there we go. So that's going to be our stat right now. You can cast the spell Arcus when enemies are outside of weapon range. Arcus can be influenced by the manner of equipped weapons. Now, of course, I haven't done anything else, but you can, if you so desire, go with Guile, for example. Now, Thwart is used to perform tasks requiring dexterity and improvisation, and improves combat initiative. It also, I believe, affects the amount of lock-picking skill that you're able to use. So, yes, as we can see here, the recommendation. This zombie is not very sturdy or very useful, but it will have to do. Recommendation. Any combination of abilities will complement the zombie, but guard and ward skills will give you more survivability. So if we want to, we can go with that recommendation. And guard and ward skills. So there's guard. Guard reduces incoming damage and makes enemy attacks less effective. But we're going to go for ward because I would like to get the first skill in that tree. So let's do that. As you can see, it's a healing aura. You and adjacent allies regenerate some hit points whenever you gain the defense status, which is actually kind of cool, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. So otherwise, I think I'm just going to go for some blast just to improve our damage a little bit and weave one. There we go. Okay, I don't know whether this is any good. Do bear that in mind. I haven't played a necromancer before, so we're going to find out. Escape from your cell. The reanimated guard stands ready to defend you as you make your escape. This choice determines your character's personality type. This affects in-game banter, as well as the dialogue your character will use when appearing in other users' games. Now, what are we going to do? That's the thing. What are we going to do? I suppose an insane necromancer would probably make a good deal of sense, wouldn't it? So let's do that. Insane. You step out of the cell and into the hallway. 
Yes, everything unwinding, but I caught the end. Yep, insane. Many different choices during your trial. Ah, it loaded too fast. I don't know what that said. But that's where we have to get to, so... Yes, this is where we are welcomed, so... Basically, you just use left click and right click and you can approach different things and read things so we can examine this Left clicking on the map will always be a movement right clicking will always be an interaction So that's good to know objects that can be interacted with will show feedback text when you mouse over them unless you are Telekinetic you have to get close in order to interact And we can also interact with combat here. There is a guard waiting in the next room. Thank you sign Thank you for telling me and you will have to fight him People with high fight or hunt ratings will deal lots of damage in close combat, while people with high guard or dodge ratings are good at soaking or avoiding it. People with a high blast rating can do a lot of damage when they are not in close combat, and a high ward rating allows you to heal wounds and disrupt enemy magic. Try to position fighters so that the enemy is forced to come to you. This lets you have the first strike in close combat. Sometimes having someone in close combat who just defends themselves is more helpful than having them attack. And I think that's what we're actually going to do, because we have a reanimated guard here, and we can quite easily... I mean, look at him. He has 99 guard skill. That is insane. Wow, I'm very happy about that in actual fact. Okay, so let's move over there. And now we can move our reanimated guard as well. Or can we? Can we, can we not move him just yet? No, apparently not. So we're going to open this door. Now we can move the reanimated guard. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Well, I think we're going to move inside. And now the guard is going to move. Oh, no. Oh, no, he's attacking us. This is terrible. Okay, let's move away here. Let's move behind there. There we go. Okay, so now the guard is going to have to attack our reanimated guard friend, which is perfectly fine. So let's start attacking, shall we? Yes. Can I, can I not attack him from here? Apparently, I can't attack him from here. I don't have enough blast, perhaps. Maybe that's what it is, but we do have that aura as far as I'm aware, so maybe I can just move over here and kill him. Can I, can I, can I actually kill him? I am actually unsure about that, but we're going to try. Yes, there we go. Okay, we killed him. So now, <laughs> do bear in mind, I am not good at this game. So yes, there is going to be quite some problems going on here. Oh, what's that? That's a sandwich. A soggy sandwich in actual fact. Let's take it. I would like to eat it already. Can I can I do that? Yes. There we go. Okay, so now we're back to 45 HP, exactly where we need to be. So let's open this up. Anything else in here? No. But we can open these doors up and we can take a look around. Doesn't seem to be anything. That's kind of sad. Okay, so Ah, there's a lock here. Okay. Needs an ordinary key. You have none. Of course we know. We don't have any of those. That's pretty sad. But there's another door over here which we can open. And we can head onward. There's another door here. Tick tock, tick tock. Yes, of course. Thank you very much, insane reformist. Okay. Is there any is there any other door here? I think there is. Yes, there is another place, but it doesn't actually lead us anywhere, so I suppose I can just walk around there. There we go. So what does this sign actually do? Give your party members a chance to evaluate their surroundings by holding skill. Uh, still, not skill. Your party members will find the key to this door if you let them. Press the R key or the spy glass button on the left side of the screen to show you items that may be loose on the floor. The guard dropped a sandwich. If you haven't already, pick it up and put it in an inventory slot by right-clicking on it and then clicking a slot. If someone was injured in the fight with that guard, select that person with the tab key or number keys 1 to 4, and then right-click and hold to eat that sandwich. Food is reasonably plentiful and cannot be used in combat, so use it to keep your health topped up. That is very nice. So we're going to just hold still for a second here, see if we can actually see something. Ah, there seems to be something going on on... Ah, there's a key. Yes, a small iron key has been left on the table here. Thank you very much. This kind of key is generic and will fit any door that requires a normal key. So I'm going to be opening this here. There we go. Okay, so we have a we have a guard over there. And we are going to be moving on over here. Thank you very much. I'm going to just move there. There we go. Okay, so we are just going to wait until that guard comes here. And then we're going to... What are we going to do? I think we'll just go defense. Can I actually attack him though? I can't actually attack him. Well, I can kind of, but he's attacking me in return, so I probably should have gone for Blast. Probably should have gone for Blast. Yes, that would have made a 
good deal of difference, but we did kill him quite easily. And there is a sandwich over there, so I suppose that's pretty good. So let's try and move over here. There we are. Okay, so we're going to let our reanimated guard help us out a little bit more now. So let's just... I actually don't want to do anything. I'm just going to do defense. Oh, we actually healed ourselves. Did we actually heal ourselves right there? I think so. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, so there we go. The reanimated guard is doing a good job. And two sandwiches. Fantastic. Okay, so now we can actually pick those up, put those in our respective inventories. And I think we're going to be healing both of us. No, no, no. We're not going to be healing both of us. Okay, Reformist. It says, touch me like you touch your lover. Oh, yes. How fantastic. Okay, so now we can head onward. And I think we can actually go over here. Managing risk. You've noticed the enemies acting in reckless bursts. You can use the shift key in combat when you select your action to perform it recklessly instead. A reckless action increases your risk gauge every time you perform one, but it only ends your turn if you fumble. The more risk you have, the more likely a fumble will occur. Fumbled actions will fail and expose you to take extra damage until your next turn. Cautious actions will never fumble regardless of risk, but they will immediately end your turn. Managing risk effectively by deciding when to be reckless and when to be cautious is the key to success. Daredevils, however, contribute a bonus experience to the party, so it may on occasion be worthwhile to throw caution to the wind. Experiment some. Well, that's good. That is very good. So with that, I think I'm going to be ending this episode of here. Do you want to see more of this? Do you want to see more of Bastard Bonds? Well, then let me know in the comments or by doing other things. Who knows? One plus one is me and me plus you is two. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said he's saying all kinds of crazy things. So, yes, let me know if you want to see more. I thank you very much for watching this special feature of Bastard Bonds. And I will see you next time.